in the 16th stanza rabi ben ezra says for not when evening shuts a certain moment cuts the deed of calls the glory from the grave a whisper from the west shoots at this to the rest take it and try its worth here dies another day all this is like an evening it is for rest and not for work when the sun sets we leave even the great work and think of the gone day and done work of the day so is the old age to see what all we have done today or what all we have done in the past now the sun of his youth is also set his soul has also left its work or its battle that is it is now about its struggles and he has to make an estimate a calculation of his gains his losses in the battle of life here rabbi ben azra compares life with a war that life is a battle and soul is a fighter and this world is a battlefield we all are fighters the same idea we also find in an another poem of robert browning when he says that the soul is a fighter and we should not be afraid of fighting coming in this world battle ends in the end of the day and a soldier looks at his injuries his gains his losses and heals himself taking rest taking rest to heal his injuries to heal his wounds so that he might fight again the next day so he gets uh, refresh only for the next battle for the next fight now like a fighter like a fighter rabbi ben azra will also examine the results of his struggles his net profit or achievements which one is greater gains or losses and he will also see whether the battle his soul fought in the last days in the last time in his youth or in his past time whether the battle was right or not or it was only based on his ego so just look at the 17th stanza so is still so is still within this life thought lifted over its strife but but when he say that he will calculate he will judge why why all this calculation or examination is necessary why we should see why we should think of all this in our old age because uh, rabbi has faith in the rebirth in an another life life after this life and here we can find the profound philosophy of robert browning his faith in soul his faith in the immortality of soul his faith is firm belief in god's perfection in rebirth that there is an another life after this life and how a soul must get a spiritual power for next birth coming to the 18th stanza just look only few lines for more is not reserved to man with soul just not to act tomorrow what he learns today here work enough to watch the master work and catch hints of the proper craft tricks of the tools true play so rabbi wants his soul to be fully prepared for the next world next world after death where his soul will rest for a while before going into a next life Uh, that is the next world uh, after death and during that particular time during that particular time 
Rebbe will observe his master working using his different tools. Actually, he regards that uh, this world, just uh, try to understand this philosophy, this world and the next world, when we say the next world, the next world after death. And uh, during that short time, our soul, our soul remains with God. That, that is time may be long, that time may be short. So that is the next world. And then after that world, the soul, it goes into an another life. So here Rabbi Ben Azra says that when for a short time after death he will enter an another next world, he will observe the work of his master before going into a next life. So here is the philosophy of Robert Browning. And he will, he will try to observe his master working using his own tools. So what Rabbi says in the 18th stanza, uh, it, this stanza is most mysterious, most philosophical as well as very, very inspiring to do good works in our lives. He says that a man's soul is given. A man's soul here that is uh, a man's soul is given only such power in the next life as its knowledge can buy if uh, i focus only on this stanza right just uh, give me some time and let me focus completely only on this stanza for more is not reserved, it is so mysterious. And let me explain to you in detail. He, he says here that a man's soul is given only such power in the next life as its knowledge can buy. Means it is only knowledge. It is only knowledge that can buy power to it. The more knowledge a soul has, the more power will be available there or will be provided for the next life by God. So knowledge, we can say that knowledge or learning is just like currency, currency of that world. The more you have, the more you can buy. So spiritual power, what you can buy? So spiritual power is very, very important for a human soul and it can be achieved only through learning to start a new life or to start a new journey. And that is all in all, all in all for a human soul. Therefore, to act tomorrow what he learns today. Therefore, what we learn today will give power to our soul. And with that power, that is spiritual power, our soul will be able to fight the battle of life in the next life. Are you getting this point that our soul will be fully power, completely it will be powerful to fight the battle of life in the next life. So here Robert Browning regards learning as the most important thing for a human soul. And Aristotle also regarded, he also emphasized on learning. Now, the purpose of man's life is what? If we follow the philosophy of Robert Browning, if we follow the uh, beautiful, inspiring advices of Rabbi Ben Azra, so what is the purpose of uh, man's life or the purpose of human soul? It is to acquire much more learning. For what? To the upliftment of its soul. Rabbi says that in the present given life a man should try to do much more good works and must try to have sublime thoughts, high thoughts. Means one should think lofty thoughts. But why should we have these kinds of thoughts? Why should we do good works? So that he may be able to see the working system of God in the universe.
if you are not going to have sublime thoughts within you if you you are not going to engage with you uh, in the good works then you will never be able to see the working system of god in the universe and rabbi ben ezra gives a very beautiful example of a new learner of a student you can say of a person of a child who is uh, who is uh, taking training the master work here work enough to watch the master work and catch hints of the proper crafty tricks of the tools true play uh, just like that that a new learner can know all the secrets of his master's work only if he watches him at work means he can learn from him a, a child a new learner can learn from his master only observing how he uses his craft how he uses his skill and how he uses his tools so rabbi like that new untrained learner will also learn observing the working system of god watching his master his master of course uh, that is god watching his master at work using his tools tools love kindness mercy all these are tools of god love kindness mercy sympathy or force maybe other feelings also that how he how he runs this universe what kind of tool he uses to punish the human soul or to reward it so he will also learn the secret of god and the secret of life also and the proper proper use of all the tools true that is true play true play the, the use of tools and this knowledge will give his soul extra power whatever he will learn from god watching him observing him that will definitely give his soul extra power to fight its battle in the next life so rabid soul will get knowledge as a human being in this world and it will also try to get knowledge when it will be with its god so learning is emphasized in the 18th stanza that most important thing is to get knowledge because it is only knowledge it is only learning that can take our soul higher and higher then if we come to the next stanza the stanza 19th one rabbi says in brief rabbi says that youth is for struggle but not old age we should not be greedy in old age as just look at the stanza 19th as it was better youth should strive through acts and count toward making then repose on art found made so better is exempt exempt from strife should know then tempt further thou we test age we death no be afraid no be afraid so youth is for struggle but not all days and we should not be greedy we the the conclusion the epitome of this stanza is that rabbi says that we should we should means that own pers old person should not be greedy in old age to get more and more our young age waits for old age and old age must wait for death but without being afraid in youth we make preparations for old age and in old age we should prepare for death and we must be satisfied in our old age if we are able to judge good and bad right or wrong then we must be very very happy we must be very satisfied in our old age rabbi says that youth should work hard so here is an inspiration here we find a difference between both youth and old age what youth must do and what old age must focus we youth 
should work hard to make its own achievement and it should not have rest not even a young man should be satisfied with the other's achievements his own achievements will be counted and not others and old age old age should be free from the hard work and struggles this is the best advice from the side of rabbi ben azra that uh, an old person should not be greedy should not be tempted to make more and more achievements to make more and more money like a young person means an old person should never fall into the temptation of making more money or getting more success as it will be it will be his greed and it should wait for death he should wait for death or he should prepare for death without any fear means he should focus on the when we say that he should prepare for death it doesn't mean that he should surrender himself completely before his death it means just look at the 20th stanza that is uh, subject to no dispute from fools that crowded youth no let the feel alone so just look here when he say that uh, an old person should be ready for death should wait for death or should prepare for death he means uh, he should focus on the inner self on his spiritual world he should care for his spiritual world and for his soul's upliftment and he should not focus on worldly people worldly achievements he should care the inner world and not outer world means not the materialistic world because spiritual world is greater than materialistic world in this age so an old man should think of soul should think of god and uh, inner progress inner achievements so here that's me and for this uh, his knowledge must be so perfect not to yield to greed and his wisdom will help him not to have a sense of loneliness the last word that no let the feel alone okay just look here this uh, word that uh, no let the feel alone the very beautiful line not uh, no let the feel alone in the old age maybe that an old person may feel himself very alone or lo loneliness but he says that uh, there must not be a sense of loneliness and it will be the wisdom of an old person it will help him not to have this kind of sense of loneliness because it is the time it is the time to join the company of god and not to to join the company of worldly people and being with god being with him he will never suffer from loneliness so rabbi ben azra is very very optimist here he is very hopeful that when you are old you must try to have a relation with god and he is very sure to feel that it is the company of god that will never make you feel that you are alone